All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about four knives that I think are pretty interesting and definitely worth talking about. Essentially, I bought these knives so you don't have to, but these are knives that um, are, are pretty decent and I think worth talking about. So I bought these knives, had them shipped over from across the pond and I bought them so that we can go over them, talk about them. And so that you can decide whether or not these are worth it for you. Now, first off, these are going to be knives that are from Veristilica or Alika, however you want to pronounce it. It's a Finnish company. And if you don't know that these knives were pretty popular, I believe uh, they peaked in like 2018. A lot of people knew about them. Quite a few people bought them, but they have, they have since that time frame kind of fallen off the radar. I have mentioned them in previous videos, but um, these guys are definitely interesting knives worth going over. And uh, like I said, we're gonna be breaking down quite a few different flavors of knives that these guys make. So first off, we're gonna talk about who Veristilica is. And uh, if you guys are already familiar with the company, then you can kind of skip that portion. But if not, it's going to be worth talking about, you know, who they are. And then we're gonna be going over different models. I have quite a few different models from them. Um, and we've got like, I think their most popular knives. So it's worth talking about and I think worth going over. So first off, let's talk about who Veristilica is. Okay, so first off, like I said, before we talk about the knives individually, Verstilica is a Finnish kind of military surplus store, but they do more than just military surplus. They also make some of their own equipment, including including knives. Now, back in 2018, these guys kind of peaked in fame because they have very affordable driven knives um, that are made out of decent materials. Now, these are all made out of 80 CRV2, which we've talked about in previous videos. You guys are probably aware um, if you've watched those videos. And I'm not the largest fan of 80 CRV2. However, for pretty much every one of their knives coming in at under $100, um, and depending on how you option them out, you can get like plastic covers, um, you can get sheaths. Um, the sheaths do tend to push the knives over $100, but like the Scrama, I got it with just a plastic cover. And so, you know, that makes it a little bit less usable, but if your intentions are to throw something like this in a backpack, having this blade cover is pretty decent just because it covers the blade and it's super affordable. So depending on what you, or how you option them out, you can get them, you know, for well under $100. Um, but yeah, so for, for what the price is, I don't feel like 80 CRV2 is a bad steal. Of course, like I said previously, I don't feel like 80 CRV2 is the best steal. It's essentially, to kind of paraphrase um, what I've talked about in previous videos, it's essentially kind of like um, 1083 Crovan. So many people are familiar with um, K-Bar's 1095 Crovan. So that's 1095 high carbon steel. It's a basic high carbon steel with chromium and vanadium added to it to give it predominantly better shock resistance and better wear resistance. Obviously adding chromium to things can make it more rust resistant, but in the levels of chromium and vanadium that we see in ADCRV2, it's such a low amount of chromium that it's not going to actually impact or have a meaningful impact on corrosion resistance. So you're just using the chromium there to give better um, edge retention and better toughness. So once again, not a bad steal, but you're still dealing with essentially 1085 or 10 sorry 1083 um, high carbon steel that has been kind of souped up to be a little bit more high performance now once again if we're talking about a 365 dollar winkler in 80 crv2 i have a problem with 80 crv2 at that high level but with knives that are sub 100 dollars like we see here i don't really have an issue with the steel okay so that's kind of the brief synopsis and i went over the company who they are and the steel because that is a steel that is used in every one of the knives we're going to be talking about today, whether it's the big Scrama or all the way down to the small little Puko styled knife. So um, that is the steel that's used in every single knife here. Um, there are many different flavors, so I thought it'd be worth talking about each of them. So first off, the one that is the most known or well, well most well-known of Verstilica's knives is the Tarava Yakari Puko. And don't ask me to spell that, it's tremendously hard, but 
This is the Tarava Yakari Puko, and um, this is the 140 millimeter blade. So this one comes in at about five inches. So this is probably a good, decent field knife. I don't know, it's pushing that like limit of survival knife, but the thing I dislike about it for a survival knife, it's a little bit on the thin side, but the things that I do think that this knife or their knives in general do well. So we're gonna talk about that first. So what do I think these knives do well? First off, I like that on almost every single one of their knives, they have a very high Scandinavian grind. In my opinion, high Scandi grinds tend to make the Scandinavian grind perform much better. So you guys can see here, especially very evident on the 140 Tarava Yakari Puko, um, it's very evident that this is a high Scandi grind. So it's very cool. In addition to that too, as I've talked about in many videos at Nauseam, I love rubber coated handles. I think honestly, we should see this on more knives going forward. Rubber or a form of rubber, uh, rubberized handle is super grippy. It's also very temperature neutral. And it's very interesting to see, you know, you see, look at uh, Falkneven, you look at uh, Mora, you see a lot of these Scandinavian knife companies coming out with rubberized handles and that's because primarily the performance of rubberized handles in arctic environments is very good so these handles don't get you know super cold to the touch unlike your wood handles or your more traditionally handled knives so having an exposed tang and wood handles will contribute to a knife that is colder to handle uh, for prolonged periods of time. So overall, these handles are very basic. There's nothing special to them, but they are rubberized. They are very grippy. Of course, these are full tang knives. It's worth noting this is the tang of the blade protruding here. Obviously, these would be some degree of rat tail tang because this is smaller than this. But as far as toughness from the Yukari Pukos, uh, they are totally fine. So for me, I think that these guys are very good. Now on the Yakari Puko, the things I don't like about it. So first off, like I said, I think that the blade shape is a little bit narrow, but the one kind of fatal flaw to these knives that actually made me really sad is it's very hard to see from a straight shot like you guys can see here or from here. These knives look like pretty decent um, blades, but one thing that I hate that they did is upon further inspection, you guys will notice. So this is the spine of the blade, right? So you'll notice that they did 45 degree cuts on each side of the spine. Now this is in theory to reduce the sharpness of the spine so that you don't like cut your thumb on this. However, what they've also done is make it so that this does not strike ferrocerium rods. I don't have a ferro rod handy so I can't show you it striking, but if this was sharp, I would not be doing this with my fingers. Rest assured, it would be tearing them up. So this is very, very dull. And so unfortunately, unless you go all the way to where the um, grind line is, the grind line starts to pick up more. It's not super sharp, but unfortunately, due to the fact that they beveled the spine, these knives will not be able to strike ferro rods. That also unfortunately um, leads us into, or the segue for the Skrama. The Skrama is a little bit more noticeable, you guys can see, because they've had to, this blade's wider, so they've had to take a larger portion out. But you guys can see there that they've done the same thing with the Skrama. So both the Yakari or Tarava Yakari Pukos and the Skramas have this feature. So whether you're going for a Skrama or a Yakari Puko, you will have that downside to both of them. Now, like I said, kind of segue into the Skrama. Now the Skrama was originally designed by Veristalika to be essentially more of a to be more of a large chopping knife, you can get scramas that are on the larger end or actually even the smaller end of the Yakari Pukos. So you guys can see here kind of a size comparison. This is the 140 and this is the 210 millimeter. So this is a noticeably bigger knife. This is definitely um, more designed for chopping and kind of, you know, more industrious tasks. However, they have made smaller versions over the course of time for the Skrama to make it a more just general purpose knife. Now, for me, in my opinion, due to the blade shape here, this is more of, especially in the larger blade configurations like this one, it's more of a parang styled knife. Now, this is definitely not a parang 
fully, but this is definitely like the way the blade shape is, the way it's kind of designed, it's designed to be more like a parang. And so a parang is a type of machete. Now this one is definitely heavier spined, so this is definitely more of like a knife, but it does have that really good chopping ability. And due to the fact that this has a reverse point tip, so as you can see, most, most typical knives have a tip that terminates towards the upper portion of the like blade stock, whereas a reverse point um, terminates towards the cutting edge. What this does for a parang styled knife is it gives you more usable cutting edge when you're chopping. So when you're bringing down and chopping, instead of that edge essentially running away from you, it runs towards you, giving you more functional use towards the tip of your blade. So if you're trying to chop something larger or you're trying to chop towards the tip where the leverage is greatest, you want something like the Scrama where it's going to give you better chopping power. So this is, like I said, the Scrama 210. And for an overall general purpose woods knife and survival blade, this is where I would start to look. If you're looking at um, the Verastalaika kind of knives for survival purposes, this is probably where I would go. And if I was to make like a survival kind of knife set from them, I would probably choose something like the Scrama 210 or 240 millimeter. So you're getting a larger kind of chopping slash batoning knife. And then I would probably pick something like this wood knife, um, the very small uh, like three inch version of the wood knife. I forget the millimeter on this one, but it's essentially a three inch Puko. And so this is gonna give you a lot um, better like processing and like fine tuned ability. Now we'll get to the wood knives in just a moment here, but um, <coughs> for the Scrama, I would personally choose the 210 or the 240 millimeter. Now, a lot of the pros are the same as the Tarava Yakari Puko. Um, the, you have a good rubberized handle, once again, going to offer good performance in Arctic environments. Um, it's also gonna just give you lots of traction. It is oversized as opposed to the more, you know, realistically sized uh, Yakari Puko. So that is also an advantage. It is super comfy in the hand. So this should deal with hand shock and such pretty darn well. Now, one thing that's more evident that I dislike on the Scrama, this is kind of evident, but to a lesser portion on the Yakari Pukos, but it's definitely more evident on the Scramas is that you have a micro bevel. Now this is still a Scandinavian grind technically, but they did put a pretty decent um, micro bevel on here. Now for me, I don't hate the micro bevel on the Scrama for the reason that if you're looking at a Scrama, at least in the larger size range, if you're looking for a Scrama for a chopping knife or something that's going to be used for impact specifically, um, historically speaking, Scandi grinds are really bad when it comes to chopping and impact because if you know what a Scandinavian grind is, it's a zero grind, so it essentially looks like this, going down to a terminal edge. And so what that means is there's no support at that very cutting edge. So if you're chopping, especially into harder woods, you have a much higher likelihood of chipping or breaking or rolling that edge because there's no edge support. So what a bevel does is it acts as that kind of triangle at the very terminating end of an edge. Of course, if you know geometry, you know that triangles are incredibly strong. And so what that does is that bevel gives you a great deal of strength improvement. And so for this knife being a more chopping focused or more, you know, batoning focused, kind of the more impact uh, realities of survival, I don't actually hate having a micro bevel on this edge. So for me, I don't hate it, but it is worth noting, especially if you go with a smaller um, Scrama. This is why I was kind of recommending, like if you're gonna go with a Scrama, go with a larger version, like a 210 or 240 millimeter, um, go for those <clears throat> in the blade length so that you have a chopper or a kind of large, you know, batoning knife um, that can do industrial like shelter building tasks and then go with a smaller wood knife. All right, so we've talked about the Yakari or Tarabi Yakari Puko and the Scrama. Now let's talk about the wood knife. Now the wood knives, um, and these are technically both called wood knife. Um, they're just in varying sizes. It's similar to you know like the Yakari Puko. The wood knife has varying sizes, but essentially 
They're both, both of these are called um, wood knife, but what I'm going to call this guy, the smaller version is the Puko, and I'm gonna call the larger version the Leku. And that's because these are honestly, the larger one is more inspired off of the Leku styled blades of, the, of Scandinavia, and the smaller version is more of a Puko styled knife. So both of them are wood knife um, in varying sizes. That's what they're listed on the website as, but this is a um, Puko and this is a Leku. So that's what we're gonna call them in this video. So I got these two as a dual pair. You can get this, and I thought this was a pretty cool and worthwhile, like worth playing around kind of setup. You have a dual sheath here. So the smaller knife, of course, goes in the front. The larger knife goes in the back. It's designed to be a companion knife and a larger knife. So similar to how if you had a Skrama and a smaller companion knife, the, uh, the Puko and the Leku are designed to work together. Now, the one thing I like about these wood knives over the Skrama in the Tarava Yakari Puko. So the thing I like about these is, first off, you will notice that there is no um, secondary bevel on the spine. These spines are sharp and they're not incredibly sharp, like they're not sharpened from factory, but they are also left raw, so they're left unfinished, which means that they just so happen to be sharp and so they can strike the back of a ferro rod very well. So I like that about these a lot. In addition to that, what another thing I like is that similar to traditional Scandinavian knives, there is no bevel, there's no sharpening choil, there's no terminating end for the blade length. So you get a maximum blade length, which is actually pretty handy when it comes to smaller knives like this because you're really maximizing that three inch blade length. You'll notice similar construction in things like the Mora Eldris, the Mora Companion. Um, they have a very just like terminating end right at the edge of the handle. So take it for what it's worth, but I think on smaller knives like this, it can actually be beneficial because so long as you have a decent handle size like this does you have a maximum th uh, or you're really maximizing your blade length with actually having an edge that terminates at the handle in addition to this this does have a micro bevel unfortunately predominantly up at the top these are handmade so it's worth noting that there's going to be imperfections and inconsistencies in these knives due to the handmade nature of them but for the most part these do not actually have a micro bevel in the primary um, portion of the cutting edge. So what that means is it's going to offer a finer um, cutting kind of um, experience. So once again, these are handmade, so there's slight inconsistencies in the way that they are ground, but for the most part, they are ground well. Um, as far as it goes, the handle is also pretty cool. Now these are not full tang. It's worth noting these are made like traditional, like Hele knives. Um, so any of your kind of traditional Scandinavian knives, these are made that way. The cool thing about these is they are super affordable. I believe the Poo Go, this little guy here is about like 40 or 50 bucks. So it's really pretty uh, economical. It's not as like cheap as a Mora, but if you're looking for something that has, you know, like burl wood handles, like this actually has like a brass fittings, um, you know, this actually has like, this would be equivalent to a lot of Hele's knives and uh, Hele is easily double the price for a knife that's just like this. So in my opinion, um, if you're looking for something that has like a, you know, birch burl handle, if you're looking for something that has like, that looks pretty nice, um, these are actually pretty darn affordable. So it, it's worth noting, um, depending on what you want, these guys are pretty, pretty darn good. So I like that guy. I like the um, <clears throat> Puko a lot. Now let's look at the Leku. The Leku is essentially very similar. Once again, same birch burl handle, uh, you know, brass fitting, stuff like that. It has a terminating edge right at the end. This is just built bigger. Now, essentially, I really don't mind the Leku. Uh, I think it's pretty good. Once again, uh, unfortunately, like the Leku, the one that's probably not designed for as much hard use, has the sharpened spine, or not so much sharpened, but you know, like unfinished spine. So it is good for striking ferro rods. Um, this one is, in my opinion, a better blade than the Tarava Yakari Puko, but. Um, yeah, it's kind of frustrating because the, the wood knife is a wider blade, as you guys can see there. It is slightly longer, uh, maybe, maybe. Um, it's cutting edge is slightly longer for sure, but they have about the same amount, amount of blade length. But the um, Leku is just uh, a little bit better, in my opinion, for actual like survival 
purposes. Now, I will say because the Tarava Yakari Puko is designed for more like military hard use kind of thing, um, it is slightly thicker than the Wood Knife Leku. So you guys can see the Wood Knife Leku is about uh, an eighth of an inch thick, whereas this guy's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. It's about pushing five thirty seconds. It's slightly deceptive here because the spine is beveled, so you guys can see it probably looks a little bit thinner on camera because of the bevels, but it is about pushing five thirty seconds. So um, take it for what it's worth. You know, the Tarava Yakari Puko is gonna be a little bit more industrial, but the Leku, I really don't think is gonna be realistically that like less durable, but it's just a different design. Once again, this is going to fall very similar to the patterns of um, different Lekus coming out of Finland and Scandinavia as a whole. So overall for this one, I think it's about $70 if you get it individually. Now together, I wanna see that these guys are about like 110 120 dollars if you get the like package deal so if you're like dividing that roughly it's about 60 dollars a knife so if you look at that and you're comfortable with that it's honestly a pretty reasonable deal now what do i think about these guys as a whole overall like um Verstalica's knives they're pretty darn good deals when you look at like the average price for them is about 70 to 60 um, pushing 80 dollars per knife like this scrama with just that like blade cover it's about 80 bucks and so in my opinion you know depending on what you get they are pretty darn good deals and i always said 80 crv2 in this package like in any one of these knives um, given their price that like i said individually these knives are about 60 to 80 dollars a piece um i would say that they're honestly not that bad like they're genuinely pretty darn good knives for what they are so in my opinion i don't mind the 80 crv2 in them especially um, in the larger ones like the scrama i think 80 crv v2 and a chopping knife makes a lot more sense than like in a smaller knife like this unless it's once again trying to be price point oriented but adcr v2 um, is going to perform pretty darn well in an impact environment like or an impact use like with the scrama so in my opinion i think that it's just fine now would i buy any of these knives again or all of them i probably would buy them all again because they are i think the value of these knives are pretty solid like I don't have any issue with it the Scrama if I like could only choose one would probably be the one that I would buy or recommend the most or above all I think the Scrama offers the most value especially being that like for what it is it's like $80 versus like the Akari Puko is like 60 you know like 60 to 80 dollars too um so I think personally like the Scrama offers the best value and I think takes advantage of the unique attributes of this knife the best so I think it is the best one the wood knives are pretty cool too um especially I would say if I did it all over again I might not get the Leku um just because I don't have the best use application for the Leku it'll be fun to test but I think the Puko itself the wood knife Puko and the Scrama would be a really solid option like choice if you're looking for two knives um <clears throat> I would probably if you are looking for a companion knife to the Scrama I would probably stay away from the smaller Scramas and the smaller Tarava Yukari Pukos I mean the 110 might be okay but um I would say that the Puko would probably be your better bet. Um, this guy is definitely gonna offer you, like I said, because you have a, an edge that terminates at the very end of the handle, and given the features of this knife, I think this one just offers the best value as a companion knife. So anyways, guys, this has been a little bit of a longer video, but I had quite a few knives to break down in it, and I really wanted to go over these, talk about them, and explain you know, whether or not they're worth it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully this was useful. I know quite a few of the subscribers have probably already bought knives from Veris Delica, um, but this is just from what I saw in the sampling of knives that I got from them. Of course, they were not sent to me. They, Veris Delica has no clue, or probably has no clue about me as far as like, a YouTuber goes. So I think, you know, I just got like an average run of the mill lot of knives. So this is my experience. And I think generally it's pretty darn positive. These do offer a good value. And overall, I would say um, if you're in the US, like the majority of my viewers are, the shipping times aren't too bad. It's about like a week, week and a half uh, shipping time from Finland. So it's not too bad. Um, certainly you're gonna get these knives fairly quick. So that is my experience with them. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.